What did you think? Before we show you our next video, we have some news about the last fighter for the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game. Mr. Sakurai, the game's director, will reveal this fighter in the final Mr. Sakurai Presents video on October 5th. Well, I guess it's time to start thinking about Smash again. In the ongoing effort to catalyze the canonical core status of every character in Smash, I present to you today the Assist Trophies, the smallest group of characters in Smash. We are going to use the rules from the first video, as that set of rules just feel more comfortable and easier for me, and it's the one that most people are familiar with. It's been a few months, so a refresher on the categories. Smashed means that there's undeniable proof that this character has smashed. This is usually proven with children. Can't smash is the same as smashed, except player choice, alternate universe, or endings puts the canonicity of them smashing into question. Likely if her characters have close romantic relationships, and it doesn't take too much speculation to think that they have smashed, but there's no explicit proof that they have. And finally, no proof. This doesn't mean that they're virgins or they can't be flirty or whatever. It's just a mega group for characters whose lore doesn't really go over if they had or had not smashed. Like before, I'm going to skip most of the characters here since a lot of them simply just have no canonical proof as smashing isn't brought up in their game. I'm fairly certain the Moon, Sukupon, Flies Plus Hand, and Color TV Game 15 can't smash due to their lack of biology. Unless Sukupon has like a secret fifth limb or something, enjoy mech fight. Also, a lot of the assist trophies are generics, and like with the Pokemon on the fighter list, generics go into no proof. This is because we have no way of knowing if this specific Rathalos or Hammerbro has smashed not to mention some of the generics might be lacking biology. I guess it might be worth mentioning that Pinky has a crush on Pac-Man in some of the incarnations of the character. But that's a one-sided ordeal, and to my knowledge and research, I don't think any of the other ghosts have relationships. Dr. Kawashima is a real Japanese neuroscientist, but I think digging into real people's history to see if they're smash or not is really fucking weird. So I'm only going to focus on Dr. Kawashima, the AI thing from Brain Age, who has no proof as why would that subject even be brought up in Brain Age? Akira is childhood friends with Aoi, I don't think the relationship has anything more than that, and I don't like Virtual Fighter, so I'm not going to look any deeper than a couple wikis. According to Hideki Kamiya, Rodin's in a special relationship with Bayonetta, whatever that means. Also according to Hideki Kamiya, Bayonetta is a virgin, so Rodin couldn't have smashed her. Oh, and don't get me started on that surprise Koi scene. Like, what? How do you even get there? How does Rodin doing a surprise smashing even make sense in the context of a friendly spar against your friend that just restored your power? The pose is there to mock the player and be a Raging Demon reference. You know, that move in Street Fighter, where Akuma hits you, screen flashes, punches effects, and now he's next to a lying body and does some sort of pose. Like, that's some major mental projection if you think a Raging Demon is the Rand's treatment. Hey, me from the future. So, I've just become aware of the hair thing in Bale 2, but that doesn't change anything, as that's supposed to show the symbolic power of the move. It's nullifying Bale's power, her hair. I hate to keep hiding behind the minor Bayonetta, but according to Hideki Kamiya, if she just worn some normal clothes, it would be just like what we see in Bayo 1. Likely to smash the gray area with use our brains a bit and speculate a little based on canon facts. Not everybody can be like Big Boss and just straight up smash their romantic interest in their games. Almost everybody here and likely to smash for cis trophies has very weak relationship ties but they still fit the tier regardless. Alucard is a love interest for Maria, and they do live together in the Nocturne of Reminiscence audio drama. Although, Alucard is very emotionally closed off, making his placement more of like an unlikely to smash really. However, by the end of the audio drama, you can kind of make a case for Alucard eventually coming around to Maria. Kind of? <laughs> Zero has had three love interests throughout his incarnations, although he doesn't really show any romantic feelings back towards them, but he is the most emotionally open with Iris. Honestly, Shovel Knight is kinda confusing to me, because I always thought Shovel Knight was just like a one-sided thing, and him and Shield Knight were just partners in combat, but like, all the internet says that they're together, so I guess him and Shield Knight are a thing. Although if I've been misled by misinformation or disinformation by shippers, then I'll let the record show that I originally thought it was a one-sided ordeal. Gray Fox was in a relationship with Czech figure skating champion Gustava Hennifer, however, their relationship ended abruptly due to Cold War politics. The sheriff and the women he saves fall in love, right? After beating the game, which can lead to something. Although, like, literally everybody else in this incarnation of this tier, it's kinda weak, but just barely enough to qualify. And finally, the only character for Strong Foothold, 
the Prince of Sable, who marries Princess Tiramisu at the end of the game. Can't smash. Undeniable proof for cannon smashing, except for the one big issue where it can be not canon due to question of canon universes or timelines. Knuckles has a daughter with Julie Sue named Laura Sue in the Archie comics, in an alternate future timeline known as the Light Mobis. This is not canon to the games, so I don't think we put Knuckles in the Smash categories, so that's why he's over here. Crystal is here for the same reason as Fox, their son, Marcus McCloud, and Marcus is only seen or mentioned in a possible ending in Star Fox Command. Tiki can possibly marry Robin in Fire Emblem Awakening, which means she could potentially be a mother for Morgan. Lynn is a possible mother for Roy, Lelina, or Sue, depending on who she gets a pair ending with in Blazing Blade. Finally, we have the Smash tier, which means no argument. They have Descendants, which means they have smashed somebody in the canon. Andros has a grandchild, Dash Bowman, who appears in Star Fox Command. Captain is married to Lalani, and they have a daughter named Leela. Samurai Goro's son is named Daigoro and raises an F Zero AX and GX. Matthew is the protagonist of Golden Sun, Dark Dawn, and is the son of Isaac and Jenna. Throughout the years, Bomberman, White Bomber, Shiro, whatever his name is, has had quite a few love interests. His daughter was also revealed from Load Runner Rescue, and her name's Alexandra. Also, according to the North American storyline of Bomber Boy, he has a son. And finally, my man Guile, who's married to Julia, or was it Jane, the older sister of Eliza Masters, Ken's wife. Together, they have a daughter named Amy, or was her name Chris, who is their only child. And that's all the assist trophies. If I finish this video on time, the final DCL character was already announced today. And it's actually insane they added Rance to Smash. Until is actually acknowledging the visual novel genre by adding the main character to the highest rated visual novel of all time to Smash. Dude, it kinda crazy though they added a slug from Toho to Smash. Bro, nobody saw Zangief coming. Like, who would have thought they would add another Street Fighter rep? Really cool how Nintendo remembers Advance War exists with them adding Combi. However, bold move of them to make him solely rely on his katana. Damn, how did nobody know it was Chris Deltarune? It was so obvious with Chapter 2's release. Damn, how did nobody realize it was Chris Fire Emblem? It's so obvious with the Fire Emblem's past schedule. Bold move of Nintendo to make Smash into Mugen by adding Creative Fighter as the final DLC character. Too bad they automatically DMCA you for using this DLC. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the new fighter yet. Hopefully I come up with something. And me costumes next. Probably, maybe, hopefully.